Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855 855- 678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. And it's time for another Triple Lutz report. First, we've got a new sponsor, which I am incredibly excited about. I just placed my first order with them. Their name is preparewise.com. They are an emergency food supplier. They approached me, interestingly enough. I checked out their products. They are top-notch. A lot of the emergency food out there, honestly, you know I'm a foodie, and I live to eat. And uh, if you saw my gut, it would be very clear to you. But here's the thing. I feel like a lot of the emergency food that's out there I kind of feel like I'd rather not survive if I have to survive on this stuff. It has no taste. If it does have a taste, it's it's inexplicable. I can't stand the stuff. But these guys been in the business 20 years and their food tastes good. Hey, is it as good as a meal at the Four Seasons in New York? No, it's not that good. And you're not gonna get a bottle of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild for $1,500 to go along with it. However, it's tasty, it's satisfying, I recommend it. Obviously, they're a sponsor, I wouldn't have taken them on, but this is the best freeze-dried food that I've tasted, and I've tried a number of different ones. In some warehouse clubs, they sell these things. I mean, it's like you could buy a pallet load of emergency preparedness food, and the stuff just has no taste. I mean, powdered eggs are just not going to make my day. This food is good. I recommend it. I purchased it, and they're a sponsor. Go to kerrylutz.com, click on their banner that's there. They've got specials just for Financial Survival Network listeners. And I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I constantly get questions from people. How much food should I get? Where should I get it? My opinion about food I think each member of your household probably should have about 60 days supply. If you don't get bottled water, you should get it and you should stock up with about 20 or 30 of them. And then you keep using the bottled water and they pick up the empties and restock it. So you've always got 30, 40 gallons of water in your house because you never know about the water system. Even in good times, we have water main breaks, we have reservoir contamination events, all sorts of things happen. And I don't know if the bottled water is any better. I like spring water. I don't like purified water. I stay away from it. So if you got 60 days worth of food for each member in your house, and then you should throw in some extra just in case you shouldn't tell people that you've got emergency food ever, just like you shouldn't tell them that you're holding gold and silver. But look, if you want to help friends out to have some extra not a bad thing. If it lasts more than 60 days, I think we're going to have to go back to being hunter-gatherers. And in that case, probably you can't stock enough of it. Going into the years, I know some people out there, you stock up six months to a year worth of supplies. I understand doing it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't if you feel that that's the way you want to be prepared. My only concern is You want to keep enough so that you're a little bit portable. So if you got to get out of your house, you can bring the food supply with you. And if things go more than 60 days, then we're talking Mad Max and you better have your bunker and your shelter. Hey, today is a great day. It's not just because I'm alive and uh, breathing and working out and 
feeling in really healthy, good condition and thankful for so many of the good things in my life. That's only part of it. Gold broke 1700 today and it's going higher. I don't think there's any question about it. There's just so much going on in the market that there's no way they can keep it down at this point. Right now it's at $1,706 the ounce. Silver is getting ready to bust through 33, which is a key resistance point. Although I think the $35 mark is more important. So these are important things that are going on. Ignore the headlines. They'll try to convince you. They'll try to condition you, make you believe that things are going to get better, and they're not. And I'm looking at commentary by our friend and contributor, Daryl R. Shoon, and that's S-C-H-O-O-N. Daryl wrote a paper about the collapse of Western civilization about six, seven years ago called Time of the Vulture, How to Survive the Crisis and Prosper in the Process. Now he's on his third edition. So Daryl's a good friend, very articulate. He's an academic and an intellectual, but he's also got a practical side, unlike most of them. So <laughs> he starts out this article, and it's on kitgo.com, which is obviously the precious metals go-to site. He starts it out with, never make predictions, especially about the future. And Casey Stengel said that, although it sounds more like Yogi Berra would have said it. He's talking about how last year on September 6th, 2011, gold hit a high of $1,920. Immediately, the central banks of the world went into action, and through varied machinations, they were able to bring it back down to 1600 and it's pretty much stayed there until now. And we saw momentum building in August. And I noted the behavioral changes that were taking place in the market. Got some uh, snarky emails saying, you know, what do you know? To which I have to admit, not much. I'm not a timer, not a trader. You hear me say that over and over again. And I hope you're not either. But. That doesn't mean that I can't see the nose on my face. I mean, I have to cross my eyes to do it. But the fact is, the market as of last month in August started behaving completely different. And Daryl's talking about that on an inflation-adjusted basis, gold's previous high of around $850 in the 80s would now be 2466 dollars the ounce and his feeling is that 2466 will be taken out like frenzied shoppers overrunning walmart security guards during thanksgiving's black friday shopping event and if you've ever watched those videos on youtube watching these insane people literally have duels over saving 10 bucks on a waffle maker you can only imagine what those people are going to do when they don't have food and when they don't have water or protection. How crazy are they going to go then? The point is, as he said, there isn't a Paul Volcker there this time to jack interest rates up to 20% or higher. Okay, And that even if the Fed attempts to do it, it's going to be like putting out a rail signal in front of a runaway freight train. It just isn't going to work. And the panic is going to take place, which means that the inflation-adjusted highs of gold and silver are going to go through the roof. you got to understand that of the world's wealth today, around 2% of it is held in the form of precious metals. So if all of the world's fiat currencies just go away, then you've got 2% becoming many, many times more. You'll still have buildings, land, and other things of value, oil, commodities. So gold and silver might wind up being 25% or 40% or 50% of the world's wealth. So that's 25 times higher than they are today on an adjusted basis. However, 
whatever percentage of the world's wealth they become, that's not going to, I guess it will have to take into account the panic of trying to take your wealth out of fiat currencies and put them into hard assets. And you're just going to see this thing go so far so fast that pretty soon it will show that fiat currency has little or no value left. Perhaps the fiat currency could be a toilet paper substitute in the event that the supply chain breaks down and you can't get your Charmin at the warehouse club. But short of that, it's not going to be much good. Maybe a cottage industry of uh, artwork will emerge where they, where they use dead fiat currencies to create art. But aside from that, those paper dollars, you got paper euros, paper yuan, whatever it is, are going to be pretty much next to worthless, if not worthless, on their own. So this is what you need to be thinking about. This is why you need to go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Get some food, okay? Just get it. It's not going to hurt. Also, stock up on pasta, stock up on grains, stock up on wild rice. Don't get the bleached grains, all right? They have no nutritional value, although they taste good when you mix it with grease, like butter, oil, whatever. Get whole grains, get beans, get things that you can buy in large quantities and put them away and use them. And as you're using them, you go through a bag of beans, restock, keep restocking and buy some emergency food. It's the best deal in town. You can buy food so cheaply. And I was talking to somebody about it. You know, food doesn't matter when you have it. Money doesn't matter when you have it. Tobacco, alcohol, if you're into it, if you imbibe, doesn't matter unless you can't get it. Money doesn't matter unless you can't get it. Guns, ammo, doesn't matter until you can't get it and you want it. So you can get all this stuff now along with gold and silver. Go for it. Don't hold back because this is the beginning. I don't know when it's going to end because I will agree with Casey Stengel making predictions is extremely risky, especially about the future. So I try to get away from that. I'm following a trend here. I'm not making predictions. I'm basing my expectation of trends that I see emerging. A guy like Gerald Salenti, he's made a living off of this, of predicting these trends, of catching them before anyone else out there can. I'm not original here. I don't bring anything new to the table other than the ability to communicate to you that things are changing rapidly and you need to be ready. Anyway, if you've got some stories about precautions you're taking, about stocking up, whatever you're doing, send it to kl at kerrylutz.com. Also, go to Financial Survival Network. You can hear this Triple Lutz report as well as numerous others we've done. Guest appearances, Gerald Salente was on. We've got Catherine Austin Fitz. So many people just come by financialsurvivalnetwork.com. I will talk to you again soon. Prosperous week ahead. This has been another Triple Lutz Report. Kerry Lutz, signing off. <laughs>